Yeah, as Fabian says there, my presentation today is to essentially share with you the culmination <coughs> of probably over a decade of testing. I'm somebody that from a very young age has been very entrepreneurial and that has led me from some kind of interesting failed offline businesses into the online internet business world. And despite all the different things that I do try and that I do test, there's constantly one thing that continues to increase response and grow the businesses that I either own or am involved in or advise on. And that's what I want to share with you today. And the story is actually going to revolve around cheese. So we'll come back to that in a short moment. But just before we do, I want to just make sure everybody's clear. For those of you that perhaps do have businesses or are looking to have businesses, there are only really three ways for any of us to grow our business. The first of which is to get more customers. Okay, it stands to reason that if a customer comes through the door of your business or visits your website and purchases that you are growing that business. The second of which is to sell more to the customers at the point of sale. We're all familiar with walking in a supermarket or a store and you've got those items conveniently located just for us to grab the, you know, the chewing gum, the candy, the sweets, all these different things. They're there to obviously grow that business, to increase the profitability of that business. And the third of which is to actually have those customers return and buy from you again at a point in future. Now, incidentally, as we look at these three ways to grow a business, and there really is no other way ultimately to grow a business other than this, what I can tell you from the different businesses I'm involved in is typically the bulk of any business's profits will actually be made once you've got the customer, by bringing that customer back to buy more and more products. But Despite that, none of that can obviously happen unless you have customers in the first place. So as I always look at business, I always look at these three areas. First of all, how do I get more customers? Second of all, now I'm getting them, how do I sell more to them? How do I deliver more value to that person so that an exchange of value takes place? Because that's ultimately what business is about. I'm giving you value, you're giving me some back. And so one of the key areas and one of the most difficult, I would say, and one of the most expensive parts of any business is to actually acquire that customer in the first place, is to get a stranger, somebody that's never met you, never seen your brand, never come across your products, never seen your website, never seen anything to do with you, to have that person actually trust you enough to part with their value, their money, and give it to you. Especially when there is so much competition for most businesses that you're competing with. So this brings me back to my cheese story. Now, I am a big food lover, um, in probably not to my own health. I <laughs> absolutely love food. I love to travel, I love to eat, and uh, try all different experiences that generally revolve around eating too much. Because um, <laughs> I'm always hungry. <laughs> and one of my favorite places in the world, despite all the places that I've ever visited, I love Borough Market in London. And one of the very first times that I visited Borough Market, I remember walking around and I was completely amused and in complete my element that you could try food for free as you walked around. And I remember this excitement, like a kid just trapped in a sweet store, like walking around, like, oh, I can try all this food and I can just get it for free and then I can decide what I want to buy afterwards when I'm full. <laughs> so, uh, and I remember this experience as I walked around and I remember looking at all the different store owners, all the different business owners, and some of them were stood there kind of quiet, like texting on their phones, and I thought, oh, that's not cool. And as I walked around, I also noticed this huge crowd. I don't know if any of you are like me, but whenever I see a huge crowd, my curiosity takes over. I'm like, what is going on over there? I've got to go and take a look. And so I stood there and I saw this huge crowd of people and everything looked busy and vibrant, and I'm thinking, what is happening? And so as I got closer and closer, I realized that it was a, a cheese store. Now, as I got closer and closer, I noticed these two guys all dressed in white, looking like chefs in their clean chef whites, and one of them was actually standing in front of all these different cheese samples, like little shavings of cheese, and everybody was crowding around trying it. It was like free-for-all on the cheese, and everybody's there trying, and some are going, Ooh, and some are going, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And there was another guy stood next to him, also in white, and as people were trying the cheese, he would say to those people, what do you think of it? And as I got closer and closer, I was intrigued. My, my marketing brain started taking over. What is going on over here? So I got closer and I just listened in. I just watched. And I noticed something to my amazement. The guy was saying, what do you think of that? And some people would say, ah, not really my favorite. But others, and quite a lot of those people, would actually say, I love this. And immediately upon that reaction, he would say, well, would you like to take some home? If you want to come over here and take a look, 
I can get some cut off this and you can take that home. And he would lead those people to one side, out of the way of the crowds, and would make a sale. And I remember standing back thinking, huh, so you've attracted all of these people, this frenzy, this crowd, have swarmed to you. And there's other cheese stall owners all around. But you've got this crowd, you've captured their attention. And you've not only given away this cheese for free, but you're making sales because of it. And I remember thinking how different that is to me at the time. Like how different, you've not tried to persuade those people to come over, you've not tried to force them. It's, it's kind of the opposite of what you might see as like the traditional sales environment, you know, like the, the car salesman that's chasing you around the car lot trying to get you to purchase. And they almost chase you away, right? We all have experiences like that. Somebody's trying to force a sale on you and really all it does is make you just retract and run. And these guys are just there like, We've got this great product, there's some of it for free, now you're trying it, would you like to purchase more? And they were making a lot of sales that way, and I remember standing back thinking, oh, how could I do this with my online business? How could I engineer this same approach? And as I came away, and I went into my madman scientist zone of doing some crazy research on everything I could, I began to realize that ultimately, one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful words when it comes down to sales and marketing, is this four letter word, free. Four letters, free. Now in a context of things, a lot of people when they hear that, they think, as a business owner, just giving away my stuff for free, doesn't that sound expensive? Doesn't that sound counterintuitive? Like, how am I going to stay in business if I'm giving away everything for free? Well, I wanted to show you a few things and then tell you how we've adopted this into my business and just get your mind thinking about how this could be applied in anything that you may be doing now or in the future. This is actually an article I came across in Time Business Magazine. And obviously I won't read all of this to you, but just to give a few excerpts. Handled wisely, giveaways are all but guaranteed to boost sales. Why? One of the reasons. As a consumer, you feel obligated to buy more. There is a law of reciprocity taking place. You've given me something, I feel almost indebted to you. How many times have you felt that before? Somebody's given you something or treated you well, or you know, somebody's took you out for food, and you think, well, next time it's on me. Why is that? Because you feel indebted to that person, right? Now, there was also a test that's further on in this article, uh, an American company, 7-Eleven, they do an annual Slurpee giveaway. It's like our Slush Puppy of the UK, I guess. And uh, they gave away 4.5 million drinks for free. By all accounts, you would think this is going to be a huge loss. They literally open the doors and say, come in, have one for free. It's our free Slurpee exhibition. Like, just come in, walk through the door, get it for free, and you can leave. They actually increased sales by 38% that day. Because what people do, they got the free one, they loved it, and they bought more. Just think about that. Just giving away something for free. So when it comes to giving away stuff for free to get customers then, what do you have to think about? What process do you have to go through? Well, for me, I'm thinking, well, who is my ideal customer? Who do I want to attract in the first place? If I have I don't know, a dog training business, would it make sense to give away cat treats? No. Right? It's not going to serve my business. I have to think about who is the ideal customer that I need to attract. What items would appeal to them? You know, again, coming back to the dog training example, if I've got a dog training business, what is going to actually appeal to the right person that I can sell to? Well, I want people that own dogs, right? Perhaps, perhaps a particular breed of dog. You know, I've got an English bulldog. So for me, if I was going to be given something for free, I'd want it to be relative to my dog. That's going to attract me. Now, if you're a business owner with additional things to sell me to do with English Bulldogs, I'm now a prime customer for your business. And you attracted me to you by giving me something for free in relation to that. How can we offer it to them? You know, I use websites, okay? And how can we get it in front of them? This is obviously where we talk about doing advertising. We have so many platforms now to get our message in front of people that it's actually become very, very easy to get the right message in front of the right people. Now I know not everybody is obviously familiar with <coughs> online business, internet, e-commerce. So I just want to show you a few examples that you will have seen in your everyday life. Because what I'm saying to you here today isn't necessarily revolutionary and new. It has been used for decades and decades. But along the way, somehow, as entrepreneurs, I like to overcomplicate things and we forget simple matters. 
Because when something works, we tend to think, well, that seems too easy, let me find a harder way. <laughs> let me overcomplicate this. So just to show you, how many times have you had leaflets posted through your door? Or you've found them in stores, or you've been in restaurants, and you find this, this uh, like coupon or voucher, it's like free dessert. Now what do you have to do to claim the free dessert? Well, you probably have to go in and buy a main meal. But I've attracted you, you could, be, you could have two options of two restaurants. One you've got a free dessert for, where am I going to go? They're both near each other, but I can redeem this voucher at this one with a free dessert. I might prefer the food over there, but you know what, I can save two pounds on the free dessert over here, so I'm gonna go there. And it's crazy as human beings, we actually almost can't resist something that's free. You know, I had to laugh just recently, I was in a news agent buying some, uh, some breakfast, I was picking up some bacon and various things, and uh, the lady behind the counter, just as I was leaving, she said, oh wait, would you like a magazine? We had an over delivery, so we got some free ones. Yeah, come on then. It was women's magazine. <laughs> but I couldn't resist. And I still went home and read it. Right? We love free stuff. Chiropractors. If you happen to be a chiropractor, get someone through your door by offering them something for free. And just think, I'm showing you two examples here, a restaurant and a chiropractor, but this is universally applicable, I believe, to any type of business. What can you offer for free to get your ideal customer to take that first step through the door? And whether that door is a physical brick and mortar store or it's a website, e-commerce, what can I offer for free to get that person through the door? Now I said I've been able to, uh, or when I first saw that thing at the cheese stall in Borough Market, my brain started thinking how could I possibly apply this to online marketing, to e-commerce? Now a lot of people, it's very popular and very common to give away digital downloadable products like a free video or a white paper or a report, something you download. But the perceived value of something digital to compare to physical, it doesn't quite match. A physical, tangible item that you receive carries a much higher value. And that's what I saw with the cheese. This wasn't just some make-believe picture of cheese, like, oh, come and just look at it. This was a physical thing. Try the cheese, buy the cheese. And so this is what I've been doing in my company for the last two, three years, and it's completely changed everything. And I mean everything. I've gone from, for example, giving away a free video or a free downloadable <coughs> report or white paper to taking those same things and having them put onto like USB sticks. And now we ship those out, we give those away for free. <coughs> now incidentally, because you're probably thinking, well there has to be a cost to that, well there is. But what people actually do, we give the items away for free and here's the clever part of this, we charge for the postage. We charge for the shipping. Okay, so we don't necessarily lose money because, if you recall, the three ways to grow a business: one, get more customers. That's what we're able to do at a very high volume. Two, is to sell more to those customers at the point of sale. So when people order these free things and they give us that small nominal amount for the shipping, the postage costs, we then are able to offer them more things. So this is just a very effective way to attract our perfect customers, our ideal market into the business so that we can then further serve them, further add value. Here's another one. I hope you don't find this too hard to believe, but I am involved in the makeup and beauty market. Um, so what do we do? We give away free makeup brushes. Why? Do you think the people that request and we send out these free makeup brushes to, do you think they're interested in buying additional Make for Beauty products, yes or no? Absolutely. Absolutely. And we have a subscription box service, so they receive stuff on a monthly basis. We're growing that, adding hundreds and hundreds of people just by giving away free stuff. Uh, here's another example, a friend of mine, uh, he gives away free books. Uh, this is one of his books, giving away just under, I think, about 100,000 books right now. He's not uh, what you would class as an author, He's, he owns a software service, an internet-based website builder. Um, by giving away three books, the company was launched three years ago. <coughs> they are approaching, I believe, 60,000 paying members with a valuation approaching of $1 billion. It launched three years ago. Gives away free books. People that get a free book, they're interested in building websites. He offers them the membership to the website builder, giving away a free book. So why does free work then? Let's just be very, very clear on this. It gets a great product that you own or have sourced into the hands of those that want and need it. Without the risk, without having to sell them something. It's like, you don't know me, you don't know my company, you don't know the value that I can bring to you. So I want to give that opportunity of creating that relationship with you without asking you to take a risk on me. 
have a free thing. If you like it, and I'm sure we'll do business together again in future. Some won't, but some will. And what you'll find is, as long as you're centered on serving and giving value in your business, more will than won't. It establishes trust. It gets new customers through that front door, like the free dessert, the free chiropractic. Get someone to take that step through the door. And it establishes a benchmark to do future business. Because if I give you something great that you enjoy, do you think you'll pay a little more attention to me in future? The answer is yes. So guys, this is the four letter word that can grow any business. And I want you to look in all areas of business and life going forwards, how you can incorporate this as much as possible because nothing increases response rates like the word free. So thank you very much, Dean Holland. Thank you.